honor and blessing and glory to our God. Amen. The Bible talks about how God sent His own Son, His only Son, to be the peace that would heal the rift between enemy parties. You see, we had put ourselves by our sin into an irreconcilable situation with God. A situation in which the only just option for God was divine justice an eternal response to an underlying hatred so severe that an eternity's worth of torment would not be adequate to repay the offense. Now, because we have this new life in Christ, we still remain sinners in our nature until death. However, we walk in the light. We walk in this newness of life. Our character, our conduct, over time is progressively and gradually being conformed to the will of God as He has revealed it to us. We believers are sensitive to the sin that is in our lives, and we confess it. We're not immune to sin, but when sin happens, and here I'm talking about the actual acting out, not the thought part just yet, which is a little bit different, but when the actions happen and they are sinful, we disdain them. We struggle against them. And we have a desire to not do it even as we do it. We keep the commandments of God and we practice righteousness. Now I mean this in a general sort of way. Because, of course, we don't keep God's commands perfectly in this life. But the point is, is we're drawn to them. They are a part of us. <coughs> and when we act in light of those commandments, we are fulfilling what we were made for and who we were made to be. And when we act against them, we are declension. We are falling into something that we were not made for. So Christians' lives are marked by a conformity to the will of God and by a confession and a repentance when we fall away from God's righteous standard. We seek to walk as Jesus walked. Our great ambition is to be like our Master. We desire to imitate Christ in everything relating to his goodness, his kindness, <coughs> his morality. We love other believers. We value their fellowship and we serve each other in practical works. <coughs> There's a thing going around the Reformed community today where some people are deliberately misstating the role of justification and saying that you know good works are not strictly a part of our salvation well sure no one is saved by what they've earned in their works but the scriptures teach that our lives are to be filled with good works, with deeds that reflect this new change. And James <laughs> says, 
Faith without works is dead. So we continue in the teachings and practices of the faith that were handed down to the church through Christ and his apostles. We purify ourselves. We seek to grow in holiness, which is a moral purity. We not only separate ourselves from evil, but we draw near to God and hold on to what is good. We make a public profession of our faith. We tell the world that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. He is God's anointed one. <coughs> Our great hope and only hope of salvation is in Him and in His actions and work. We believe the testimony of eternal life that God has given us through His Son. And finally, we are subject to God's loving paternal discipline. God will not allow his children to continue in immaturity and disobedience. But he disciplines us in order that we might grow and share <coughs> in his holiness and bear the fruit of righteousness. We have a good portion from our God. The psalm says, The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Meaning that this new life that God has set up, this stage that God has populated and manifested that we find ourselves a part of, is not some existential angst thrown into this terrible world like a dog without a bone, as the song used to say. No, we believers are brought into a world where God has created good things for his children. And we live in that light. So welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let us take joy in each other's company. Let us take joy in the worship and service of our God. Let us take joy in the fact that before the foundation of the world, God saw the dangerous situation that we were in, and he acted to save us. <coughs> Friends, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, good God. Thank you for your highness and your exalted ways. Thank you, Lord, in that you have seen everything about us. You know everything about us. You understand fully our deepest sins. And yet, you have still set your hearts upon us in love. You have come to us <clears throat> with the goodness of Christ. You have come to us with an anointed one who repairs the breach, who ends the strife, who brings us into peace with you. We go from being warring parties deserving only of an eternity of punishment for offending you into being your very own sons and daughters to being able to eat at your own table with you in fellowship to being collectively as the church the bride of your son Lord God we are astonished at your ways your ways are high and exalted and holy and we lift you up 
Lord, I lift each person here up, God, and I pray for their benefit, and I pray for their good. Lord, we lift up our beautiful friends who could not be here. If they're feeling ill or sick, and we pray for them. We pray for their healing. Lord, I lift up the hearts of each person here and ask that you would bring blessing. Lord, please hear the prayer requests of our heart and respond in your good way. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let faith arise when all the saints are gathered. Let love arise, for that is all that matters. Please be with us this day, Lord, as we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, most especially, we pray and ask that you would anoint and set apart for special purpose our sacrament today. Lord, as we take the elements and we celebrate and remember how they represent Christ himself and how we eat and drink to get our very sustenance from him. Lord, please be with the speakers as they bring a message. And be with us in the week as we interact with people at our work and in our lives and in our families. Let us be a light. Let us be a blessing. Let us be a wholesome influence in our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends?